Hey, welcome back to Algebra. This uh, little section now is called Describing Systems and Predicting. And uh, do you remember our Algebra journey so far? What a journey it's been. We started off by looking at families of people, things that are the same and things that are different amongst family members. And we decided to use some of that language to map out some mass families, like family members have something that's the same and things that are different. What are the same? Well, all the moustaches and eyebrows there, I think. And we had funny names for those families, if you remember back, way back at the beginning. And then, uh, what's different? Well, they're different generations, aren't they? Uh, different children there from different generations. And uh, we then stepped across, um, come up here, and uh, looked at uh, a program run on the Casio 9860 Plus, which um, does, uh, came up with numbers and did various things with them, like maybe multiplied by two every time, do you remember this? And then multiplied a different number by two, and we call this a generation number because it generated a different family member and then maybe every time took away a certain number, maybe three, remember this? And then it generated a different family member two times one take three is neg one, two times two is four take three is one, two times three is six take three is three, eight take three is five. Remember that? And we tried to do an analysis and we thought, hey, gee, this is a family as well. It's a family of uh, numbers here. And then we decided to use algebra to analyze that. What's the same and what's different? So we call the different family numbers Y. And they came about because they had different generation numbers. And uh, each time, though, what was the same? We're multiplying by two and taking away three. So algebra is capable of analyzing what's happening with numbers and other things. And uh, this we called an algebraic expression, didn't we? This thing here, an algebraic expression. And that was getting quite sophisticated. What we want to do in this uh, presentation is to continue on the journey and see uh, what use that can be. Because by about now you might say, well, that's interesting, but what can I use it for, honey? Well, come over here. Let's come over to uh, uh, using the calculator to generate that table. So we've got this table over here that we summarise as the generation number changed, how the family member changed, listed down that way. And the calculator can do it. This is a different family here. This is not 2x take 3. And then we could ask the calculator to actually draw a little graph. As uh, Sorry about that. As we come along here for the generation number, how does a family member change? So we could say when we've got generation number one, there's a family member, and two, there's a family member. So you can draw little grids and pictures of these things, lots of different ways of representing the algebraic family here. And then, of course, you could draw it here with a different mode of the calculator, and we haven't joined up the points here. We haven't joined up the points. I wonder if you know the reason why we might not join up the points. So talk to your teacher and classmates about that one. That's an interesting one. And then finally, we started to look at other families, families of shapes. Do you remember this diagram? This was an interesting one where the, everybody took the same size piece of paper and it was a square and we chose different points around it like that so that these were triangles here that had equal sides there. And um, then we decided to find the area. And we found that everybody came up with the same area. That's magic. We were able to prove that using algebra, using X's and Y's. I wonder if you did. Oh, well, you might have to come back and look at that again a bit later on. Anyway, let's move on to doing some uh, describing of systems. Let's look at some other systems and families that might be hanging around the place. Come down here now and let's uh, do an activity. And, uh, oh, I've got something here. What's this? Looks like people, somebody's been doing uh, a bit of paper folding here. And that's what we're going to do in this presentation. We're going to generate some uh, other interesting things and see if we can analyse them with our ideas of algebra. OK, so what's this? It's paper folding, mate. Do you want to do some? Let's go and uh, start it now. So what I want you to do, here's the activity. I called it a mountain of an activity. You'll see why in a minute. So I want you to place a single A4 sheet of paper on the desk so the longest edge runs from left to right. 
So you might have to pause the presentation and grab that piece of paper. You might have to tear it out of your book or something, mate. Okay, and I want you to lay it now like this, long ways like that. So everybody in the, the class has got the same sort of um, paper or folding exercise that we're going to do. Okay, so I want you to do that. So you might have to pause the presentation and get to that point. Okay. Let's go on now. The next step, go slowly through these steps. I want you to mark the upper face with a large X. Okay, so we've got this in front of us on the page. I want you to put an X there because it's important to keep the paper in this activity always that side up. So you've got to know where you started. Okay, have you got that? Okay. If you get behind, just pause it and you can go through it again. Now here we are, what have we got here? Let's draw the paper out that we've got so far. And I want you to do this activity. It's a fun activity and you're going to be able to analyse what's going on at the end, which is interesting. So when you've got that, it says fold it in half going from left to right. So you pick up this edge and you fold it over. So it's only half the size now. So the other bit is underneath there. Perfectly in half though. Fold it neatly in half. And make a hard crease line. So really push down on this edge here so you make a crease. We're going to look at making that mountain uh, problem back at the beginning that I showed you. Okay, if you've got that, you're going to take it over here, over here, fold it over, crease it strongly, and that should be exactly half. It looks like that now. Okay, you got that. All right, let's go down to the next step. Open the paper so that it's A4 size again. It has a crease across it, which we're going to call a valley. So when you open it out now, it's got a crease across it here. A very firm line, so it's almost going to be like that. Okay, now, what we're going to do, every time we create a crease, we're going to call it either a valley, if it's flat. Okay, so it's down on the flat paper or it's going to be a mountain. You'll see that in a minute. We don't count the ends. These are not counted in at all as creases. They're just the ends of the paper. We're only going to count the creases in a minute. Okay, so you've got one crease on your paper. Is that right? Okay, come down here now. Return the paper to the folded in half position. So here we are. We'll go back here. There's a crease. Fold it back over so it's only half the size. Again, back there, and that's our crease down here. Okay, now we're going to do it again. So the paper's going to get smaller and smaller. You've got to be careful here. So we're going to fold it over again. So now it looks like this is getting narrower and narrower. And you must do a strong crease line because we want to see these when we open it up now. Make it now half the width. Got the idea it's folding over and over. From left to right, got to keep it left to right, got to have a system here. Because what we're going to try and do is if everybody does the same system, we're going to try and analyse that with algebra, mate. Okay, so come down and let's look at the next step. So we want to open the uh, paper up again to its A4 size and look at the creases it has. Uh-oh, it's going to have some creases across it, isn't it? So here's its size. How many creases has it got across it? Okay. Uh, now, some are flat and some are raised. So I've just written it that way, but um, you might have here a crease. Hang on, I won't do it exactly. Then it sticks up a bit, and the crease next one is like that. Remember, we don't count the ends. We only count the creases. So, uh, here... Oh, it doesn't quite look like that, does it? I don't think it, I've got it the other way around. So it's like a mountain crease like this perhaps might be better. Hard to draw at 3D here. So these would be my valley creases and that would be a mountain crease. So if it sticks up, it's a mountain. It's called a mountain. This is a valley. I'll show you a picture uh, in a minute, a better picture than that. You don't count the ends. You don't count the ends as creases. Only the creases you put in. Okay, and we're going to look at the pattern of these creases in a minute. So come down, let's have a look. I think I've got the picture here. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Now, 
So every time you fold it, you don't count the ends. Don't count the ends. <coughs> Only the creases. And keep it that side up. There's your X. Okay. So the first crease and the second crease there in this one uh, were valleys. And then there's all oh, there's a crease sitting up here. That's a mountain. Then the crease down the bottom, valley, valley, mountain, mountain. Okay. So now what you've got to do is keep this going. Now you've got to be careful because the thing's going to get smaller and smaller, isn't it? Every time you fold it always from left to right and put a new crease, it's going to get skinnier and skinnier. Make sure you put the crease strongly down. And how far can you go with this, do you reckon? Well, this is what I want you to try and do. I want you to fold it once we did that, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. Now, you're going to have to be very careful because it's going to get very hard when you get up around the five and six foldings. And when you open it out, you're going to have to be careful about what you count, like here it is here, what you count as valleys and mountains. So you're going to have to lay it out carefully with the same side up every time with that X on it. You got the idea? So let's do the first one. There was one fold and there was one valley crease, no mountains, and the total number of creases, T, was just add those two, add those two up here. So that's one, the total number of creases. Okay. So the idea now is to fill this table in. Fold it twice. How many valley creases? How many mountain creases? And add them up. What was the total number of creases? Now, you've got to do it carefully because we're trying to analyse what's happening here. We're going to use mathematics, in particular algebra, to see what's the same, what's different, and see if we can describe this system and predict what's happening later on, or predict what might happen later on. So I've got to leave you now with that, and uh, I want you to um, uh, do that activity and pause the presentation, and I'll show you the answer in a minute. Okay, let's come back now, and I've filled the table in for you. Okay, now I want you to pause it here and make sure that you have gotten the numbers I've gotten there and see what you think. Okay. All right. So pause it. Check your work, because we're going to talk about it in a minute. So when you're pausing it, I want you to do this activity. So correct, correct your answers if you didn't get these. And make sure that you can see what happened, what went wrong. Did your folds all come apart and you couldn't count them? Couldn't lay it flat? Didn't crease it hard enough? Whatever. Okay. Now, we all want to start on the same page here, so I want everybody to start with this table. I want you to write down all the patterns you can see in the table of numbers, any of them, like what's this doing, how much is it going up, what's happening here as, as this line changes, can you see any connections between lines, anything like that. Okay, so pause the presentation now and uh, see if you can write down all the patterns you can see. All right, we'll come back. Let's have a look at some of the patterns we can see here. And I think I've suggested to you the pattern in the first line here, this just increases by one. Okay, I don't think you can say much more than that. Let's have a look at this next row. Is there anything interesting happening here? Well, what do you want to do? Let's try and connect it this way. Do you want to try and connect it this way? There are two ways of connecting or seeing patterns, that way and also this way. What are you, what are you doing here to get to there? What are you doing there to get to there? And is it the same? Is there a pattern? What's the same? What's different? Families of numbers, remember that. What's the family of valley creases showing? Well, I don't know what the easiest way is. I reckon, now I'll just do this again. Oops, I've messed that up now, haven't I? <laughs> okay, so we'll have to come back to that. So uh, let's just pause that for a bit. Okay, sorry about that. I'll put it all back in again now. Oops, I've missed this one out here. So I'm sorry. Okay, so we go there. All right, I'll put it all back in now. So let's go over that again. Well, I think the easiest pattern to see here is this way. What's happening as you go along here, one to the other? What could you say? Did you see a pattern there? All right, discuss it with your classmates. 
You like you should pause this from time to time and just touch it with your teacher. So you're multiplying by two, aren't you, each time? Okay, multiplying by two. Two ones are two, two twos are four, two fours are eight, eight twos are sixteen, sixteen times two is thirty-two. So you might have spotted that. Can you see a connection between these then, using that as a hint? Okay, what do you do to one to get one? What do you do to two to get two? What do you do to three to get four? Four to get eight? Five to get sixteen? Is there a common pattern there? Is there something the same between those members? I don't know whether you can see it, but if you said, um, how would I get four? And we're looking at twos. Two seems to be important. Well, four is two squared, two times two. Eight, I don't know how much power or index work you've done. Eight is two cubed. We did this for families of numbers, you remember. Two by two by two. And 16 is two to the fourth. Hmm, did you see that? So here... Uh, 2 squared, ah, that power is 1 less than 3. 2 cubed, that cube is 1 less than 4. 2 to the 4th is 1 less than that 5. This is fairly complicated, this pattern. And we're going to try and put it into a formula uh, down below in a minute. Okay, so uh, there's, a, there's a pattern. Um, what else can we do there? Well, maybe we'll just come down and put that down now here. Conjecture. We're going to make up a proposition or a hypothesis or a conjecture based on these examples. So to get V, what do you have to do? You got 2 and you raised it here to get 4. It's 2 squared. In other words, it's the F number. Take 1. Ooh, you might have to think about that. How many, what power of 4 did you use to get 8? That was 3, which is 1 less than that F number. So you got the base 2, which we saw because all these are timesing by 2s. That was a clue. And it's 2 raised to the fold number take 1. Let's say check it with this one. So the fold number is 5. Take 1 is 4, so we're putting it in here. And so it's 2 to the 4, which is 16. Seems to work, doesn't it? Do the last one. Fold number is 6, so it's 2 to the 5, which is 32. Ooh, that's an interesting pattern. So let's uh, just tidy this up a bit. And we've got our first link rule telling us what is the common thing that this family here have connected to, if you like, the old generation number, although we'll stop using that now and simply say that's a value in the formula, if you like, or standing for uh, something that's varying or generating different values. Okay, let's go back up and do the mountain uh, creases here. Okay, so we're going to look at the patterns there. And if we look at the patterns there, do you see anything interesting? I don't know. You can connect this way or this way, can't you? What's happening going from one to the other? Or what's happening relating back? By the way, if you relate to a preceding one, that's called a recursion formula. What's recurring or what's the connection between the one value and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one, going that way. Well, shall we start there? Is there a pattern there? Nought went to one. One went to three. Three, oh, sorry, three went to seven. Seven went to 15. Ooh, could, did you see a pattern there? Oh, well, let's write it down here. Nought went to one. It went up by one. Then the next one went up by two. The next one went up by 4, and 7 went up by 8 to 15. Can you see that? 15 went up to 31, 16. Ooh, it looks like it's going up, apart from here, looks like it's going up by 2, 2, sorry, and then 4, 
and then 8, and then you would predict 16, wouldn't you, to uh, be the next one? And is it? Yep, 15, um, uh, sorry, 15 to, hang on, I've got that wrong now. Hang on, where have we got here? Uh, 1 to 3, oh, I put down the wrong, hang on, I put down the wrong row there. So I've got 0 to 1, that went up by 1, 1 to 3, no, I've got it right, 2, 3 to 7 is 4, 7 to 15 is 8, 15 to 16 is 16. So the next one you would predict is going to go up by 32. Okay, so that should be 48, shouldn't it? Okay, get the idea of it stepping up by increasing amounts. So this is the increasing step up from one number to another. Okay, so what about working up and down here? What's the connection between this row and this one, maybe? Can you see it? Okay, so I think oh, it's getting a bit messy around here. I think what's happening is our row here is one less, one less than this one up here. Okay, so M is one less than V. That seems to be the pattern, doesn't it? Uh, one, uh, naught is one less than one. One is one less than two. Three is one less than four. Seven is one less than eight. Fifteen is one less than sixteen. Thirty-one is le one less than thirty-two. So it's a one less than pattern going that way. So we could use that. Okay, so let's put that down here. It's much easier to write it that way. So here we could say um, this formula, M, is V take 1. Oh, hang on, no. It wants us to connect M and F. So we better go back. And what's the connection between M and F? So we've got to connect M over here back to F. Now that's going to be like powers of 2, isn't it? I think so. So what could we say here? Here, how do we get 1 from 2, 3 from 3, 7 from 4? Oh, using powers maybe. So uh, what could we say here? Uh, if we say um, to get our 7, what are we going to do? Well, we were using powers of 2, if you remember before. So uh, to get 7, we could say it's... Uh, what? 2 to the, uh, what? what? 2 to the, uh, what? F take 1, which was our previous rule, and then take 1, like that. We could do that way. 2 to the F take 1, so that's our rule for V, minus 1. We could do that. Is there another way uh, that we could perhaps do it? You might think about that. Let's go down and write that rule down here. So this rule is our previous row, take one. So that's the V row up here, take one. We could write it like that. Uh, there is a little challenge here I want to give you, is can you connect this row directly without saying one from the other one? Is there another expression for that? I'll show you that a bit later on. Let's go and find the last one, uh, uh, rule connecting T and F. So come back up here. So now we want to see patterns here. Can we see patterns here? This way? Mm, yes, we could see patterns there, I think. So here, this is going up by 2, then by 4, then by 8, then by 16. M by 32, okay. So there is a pattern there, so that um, the total number of increases is going up by powers of two here. Powers of two. Can we use that to find a rule connecting T back right up, this is getting very messy, up to there, connecting it that way. Just remember there are two connections up to the original number that way, or recursion, connecting it back to the preceding one. Okay, so what would you say? How do you get three? 
you could think of powers of 2 again. So that's 2 to the what? Well, it's 1 less than uh, 2 to the 2. So it's 2 to the F, which would be 4, take 1. Would that work? So if I raise 2 to this power, and then took 1, I get 3. What about 7? 2 to the 3, which would be 8, take 1. Seems to work that to get this last row, what I need to do is to raise 2 to the power up here, and then take 1. That's 16, take 1. It's 15. It works. Okay. So there's that pattern as well. It's a bit of a mess, that table. We really need to pause the presentation and discuss that with your teacher. So here our T value is actually 2 to the F, take 1, down there. Okay, so uh, these two should add up to this one, shouldn't they? And there's a challenge for you. Okay, I wonder if you can do that. Um, do those two add up to 2 to the F take 1? Oh, that might be a bit of a challenge, but uh, that's something that we could work on. Uh, when you add these two, the total valley and mount increases should give this one here. So 2 to the F take 1 should, when added to 2 to the F take 1 take 1, give 2 to the single F there, what's the powers, take 1. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, so you might try that and check back with your teacher on that one. Uh, that's something we'll be doing just a little bit later on. So um, see what you think there. All right, come on down and let's have a look at what we're doing. Okay, so what are we doing? We're trying to say we're analysing this system of paper folding. And if we kept going, our algebra should allow us to work out the rules and predict how many of each type of crease would be present if the paper is folded 10 times. Okay, so the number of folds would be 10. This was the rule we came up with. So here it would be 2 to the 10 take 1. Just remember we're taking away from the power. Or 2 to the... Um, 10, 10 take 1 is 9, sorry, 10 take 1, 2 to the 9. That would be a lot of valleys. Could you work out now, using that formula, how many valleys there would be if you did it 20 times? Okay, and do that down here. Then I want you to do the same thing with the mountain formula, which, remember, is the same as the valley formula, minus 1 because we know it was one less every time than the number of valleys. And then can you do it for 10 times and 20 times to work out the number of folds, oh, sorry, the total number of creases here, if there were 10 and 20 folds. All right, so pause the presentation and see if we can work those numbers out. And uh, I'll show you the answers. You might work out 2 to the 9th on the calculator. I'm just going to leave it as that big number. Right, so pause the presentation and see if we can use our formulas now to predict what might happen if we kept going with this process. All right, coming back now, let's have a look at this one now. V, if we did 20 folds, would be 20, take 1. Ooh, that would be a lot of valleys. 2 to the 19, a big number. Let's go over to look at the number of mountains. If we did 10 folds, this would be 2, 10 take 1, take 1, which is 2 to the 9, take 1. Or 1 less than the answers over here. So if there were 20 folds, F would be 20. And we could say it was 20 to the 19, take 1. Again, 1 less than the number of valley uh, creases. Okay, so let's look at the total number now of creases if we had 10 folds. So it'd be 2 to the 10 take 1. Notice the taking 1 here is not up in the power. We, didn't, we saw that the pattern was 
you raised it to that power and then took away one. And if we had 20 folds, the total number of creases would be 2 to the 20. Take one. So that's the idea. And I think you've just seen a really awesome power of algebra where we have a system, this time was paper folding, not a very practical uh, system, not going to be used every day, is it, in your life, but it's an interesting way of thinking. That's very important, the way of thinking and analysing uh, what the system is doing and trying to predict. So that's what we've predicted. If you kept the process going, they are the number of mountain and valley creases and total number of creases you'd have if you kept this paper folding going. I want you to think about that. What do you reckon? Is that sensible? Oh, is there anything wrong with our reasoning? I've got this question here for you. Red hot burning question in red there. Discuss with your teacher and classmates things like, what have we assumed? Are there any limitations? Can we prove that that would always work? Okay, so I want you to pause the presentation and discuss that now, and I'll come back with a few uh, suggestions for you in a minute. Okay, let's look at the first one. What have we assumed? Are there any limitations? Well, we've assumed, well, first of all, number one, we have assumed that it is physically possible to actually keep that paper folding going. Physically possible. Hmm, that's a bit questionable, isn't there? Isn't it? There are some limitations to that because it's not going to be physically possible to keep going forever. You can't keep going forever. I don't think that. Okay, get rid of all that. So, can you keep going forever? No. So we can't. And do you know what this is called? I wonder if you know what this is called. Where you uh, say, I've got a system, and I think uh, we will look at what's happening with 10 folds, 20 folds. I think that's too many folds. I don't think that, that's practical. I don't think you could do that. But um, if we did, and we say what's going to happen... We call that extrapolating. I don't know whether you've seen that word before. And I don't think we could keep extrapolating. Extra. Extra points. Palating comes from points in the Latin. Extra. Uh, extra points. Uh, keeping on going with something. I don't think that would be practical. We have to watch that when we find patterns in algebra and say, well, here, this is uh, what we found. Uh, we're going to predict it's going to go on forever. No, there might be some physical reasons why it's not possible. And then what about the second discussion point here? Let's get rid of that. Can we prove that it will always work? What have we actually done now? We've done a few examples. Okay, we've done some examples. That's been good. And we've seen a pattern. And we've made a conjecture. Remember, a conjecture is just a proposition. We can't guarantee that the pattern will continue, even if it was physical, physically possible. Can we say that we've nailed it, definitely? Or could we use the word prove beyond reasonable doubt? You know, not just with the first few examples. Will this pattern continue? So that's what we want to do later on in your algebra journey, and that is not just use examples. This is called inductive reasoning if you want to do the proper mathematical terms inductive reasoning we use examples to make a conjecture and then we should really end up with a proof which doesn't depend on a few examples but it can show that there is some mathematical reasoning behind this which, which, which will validate why it seems to always work and this is called deductive reasoning where we'll use algebra principles to show people that no matter what numbers they put in, it will still continue in the same pattern. So there's a lot of stuff here that's just an introduction to where algebra can take you mathematically and how it can uh, absolutely nail patterns and systems and tell you a lot about what's going to happen. All right, now, do you believe that stuff? I've got another activity for you, which I think you'll find very interesting. So come down, let's have a look at another one. And let's try and do another activity to check things out. Okay, what things am I talking about? I'm talking about spotting a pattern with some examples and uh, looking at whether it will continue or not. Okay, so here we are. 
and um, you might have to pause the presentation a minute. I want you to draw a circle and place two points on the circumference. Now, um, you might need to use a compass or uh, some uh, circle drawing tool if you've got one, because these circles have to be reasonable as we build up. Okay, so try and get your stuff together. So maybe pause the presentation, and uh, then we're going to need a book that you can draw a circle in. All right, or you could use uh, OneNote or some other uh, software on your computer as well. All right, draw a circle and place two points on the circumference. Right, I want you to do that. Anywhere. Like that. Okay, have you got that? All right, come down. We'll go through this slowly and carefully. Repeat for three points on the circumference. Now, this is a separate, separate circle, sorry. I should have said that. Separate circle. Okay, so we're going to put three points on the circumference of a separate circle. So you've now got two circles. One with two points on the circumference, one with three points. Okay, so coming on down... Join each point to each of the other points. Okay, so there's our first circle. So I'm going to go like that, across to there. And with my other one, I'm going to go like that. Now, I'll start with one point and join that, and then this point. Oh, missed that. And then I start with the next point and join it to any remaining points. So just get the system. This is going to get complicated. We're going to do many points. Join each point to each of the other points. That's important. So you start with one and join it to the other two. Then you go to the next one and join it to any other remaining ones. Okay, you got that system. Here there's only two points. Okay. You need to have a system because this is going to get fairly complicated. So start with a point, join it to the other two, go to the next point and join it to whatever's left. Okay, so it had to be joined two to three. You must join each point to each of the other points. All right, got it? Let's go down. Count the regions formed. Okay. Um, what's a region? Well, I guess you can see that's been split into one, two regions. What I want you to do now is to work out the number of regions that you think three points would divide the circle into. All right, got to line your points up carefully there. So how many regions can you count there? Pause it and have a go. So here we are, there's one, two, three, four. Four regions. Right, got the idea? Because we want to see if we can analyse this system of dividing up a circle. Oh, this is going to get heavy. So what have we got? 2n uh, is going to be the number of points, and r is going to be the number of regions. So n is 2 points, and what have we got? We've got 2 regions. When we had 3 points, we had 4 regions. We're going to see if we can analyse a pattern here. Repeat for more points and record your findings in the table. Stop when you think you see a pattern, because this is going to get pretty heavy with all these points, isn't it, around the circle. Now just note this. Any lines, you, any lines can only intersect one other at a time. Okay, well, that's not true. They can join up there but you can't have them all intersecting here. Got the idea? So if you end up with that, you've got to separate them a bit. Okay, you can't have a common point in there. Okay, so just remember the system now. As we do this, let's do maybe four points. Start with one, join it to all the others. Then with the next one, join it to what's remaining. Then with the next one, join it to what's remaining. Have a system going around the circle because every point must be joined to every other point. But if you, you have to start again, if you end up with this, you can't have an intersecting point in the middle. We must create regions. All right, so what I want you to do now is to do this for as many points along here as you have to and stop if you think you see a pattern of what's going on here. Okay, so I want you then to make a conjecture. 
make a conjecture as to how the rest would turn out based on your pattern. The conjecture based on the pattern that you see. Okay, and, uh, and stop there. Okay, have a go. Pause presentation and see what you think. And then uh, let's come down now and I'll go through it with you. Here we are. Let's start off. So we have two points. We join them and we get one, two regions. Three points. We've sort of already done this. Start with that. Join the other two. Then join the last one. One, two, three, four regions. Four points. Let's go through this like this. Four points. Start with one. Join it. Then start with the next one. Join it to the other two. The last one. Join it. Okay, let's count the regions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Five points. Let's do five. Somewhere down here. Five. So start with one. Join it to each of the others. And start with the next one, join it to each of the others. And then the last one, join it to each of the others. That one, that one, no, that's not the last one. Here the last one, join it across to that one. Okay, let's count the regions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, getting hard, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is getting hard. I want to bail out of this. Too hard, mate. Can we see a pattern? Hmm. Well, um, what have we got? Well, let's do it this way. This is going up by 2. This went up by 4. This went up by eight. Ooh, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Um, so this should go up by the two, four, eight, sixteen, shouldn't it? Is that right? Is that the one? This is going up by two. Then it's going up by four. That's twice two. Then it's going up by eight. Okay, two, four, and eight. So the next one should be going up by uh, 16, should be 32. Is that right? Do you agree with that? Can we do it with powers? What's this? Uh, 2 is 2 to the 1. Oh, well, don't think it works with this one. So here, uh, what's 4? Uh, 2 squared or 2 to the n take 1. Okay, what is 8? 8 is 2 to the 3, which is 2 to the n take 1, one less than this. Well, it looks like we've got it. This is 2 to the uh, n take 1, or 16 here, 2 to the 4, would be 2 to the 5 take 1, n take 1. Yes, it checks. I think we've nailed it. So our conjecture would be that with six points, we would have 32, okay, because this would be 2 to the 6 take 1, or 2 to the 5. So either using an explicit formula there, one connecting the regions to the number of points, or by our steps, recursion method, either way, we reckon this is going to be 6 is going to be 32. Are you happy with that? That's what we were doing before. It's called inductive reasoning. Looking at some examples and making a conjecture and saying, we've nailed it. Let's test it now. So come down, and I've got this for you. 
Now complete the table by actually counting the regions using the circle. So what are we up to? We want to test six, don't we? Well, let's do this carefully. This is going to be hard. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's join them. That one to that point, and then to this one, to this one, to this one. I missed that. Okay, got to be careful now. This is going to get complicated. Then I'm going to go to the next point and join it across here. Oops, hang on. I've skipped that. Gone there, there, and there. Now at this point, I've joined to those two. Then I've got to join it to that one and that one. And then what's left? Just this one. This has got to go across to that one and that to that one. And finally, I've got to join these two. Every point has to be joined to every other point. Now I've got to work out the regions. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's go in here. Eight, nine, that one over there, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, in there 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 5, 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. Oh no, oh no. That's not right. We have a problem. Houston, we have a problem here. It's supposed to be 32. Oh, come down and you check this. And this is why I asked you to do this activity. If we look at this carefully, there are 31 regions. R is 31. Our rule predicted that R was 2 to the what? N, oh no, what was it? A number of points, take 1. So we had 5 points, so it should have been, oh sorry, 6 points, so it should have been 2 to the 5, which is 32. So our rule has fallen over. Ah, this is why I wanted you to do this activity because inductive reasoning is based on some examples and we don't know whether absolutely that will continue that mathematical pattern that we seem to have detected will actually continue on and in this case it doesn't so what do we have to do what we have to do therefore is to go to some sort of algebraic proof Okay, and this is what we're going to do later on with these algebra presentations. We're going to try and prove without examples. That's by reasoning, by deductive reasoning, why it's working. Analyze the system, not just put numbers in, and see if we can work out what's happening. And we're going to go back and do that with the paper folding later on. Okay, I hope you've learned a lot from this, not to assume too much from some examples but also to develop some skills. That's not to say we, we shouldn't be analysing the pattern and trying to get a good understanding of what's going on. So uh, that's all for me from the moment. And uh, we'll go back and do some uh, more uh, analysis and pattern work uh, later on. And I think you're going to find it exciting, finding out how things actually work. And uh, for me now, it's cheers.